Welcome to Spiritual Uplift with Billy Lambert from the Somerdale Church of Christ. Good morning. You know, I, I, I get up some mornings and the sun is shining in the window. And I've often thought that when the sun starts shining in my window, that's just God's way of saying good morning to us. So I want to say good morning to you. In our last study together, we were talking about rejoicing. And we read some passages from the, the book of Philippians about rejoicing. But your memory verse, if you will recall, was 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice evermore. Say that with me this morning. Rejoice evermore. And I pointed out that joy is the ability of a tea kettle. Just imagine a tea kettle on the stove and, and the water is warming up and it's beginning to bubble and, it's, and then all of a sudden that tea kettle begins to, to, to sing, you know. It, the joy is the ability of the tea kettle to sing when it's up to its neck in hot water. You know, in life sometimes we get up to our neck in hot water. But in spite of all of that, we can rejoice. And the deeper our roots extend in our relationship with God, the more joy we're going to know. Now, the last verse that we studied together was actually Psalm 16 and verse 11. In your, in your presence is the fullness of joy. And if you don't have a true vital relationship with God, it'll be very hard for you to have that joy. Uh, I, until recently, would go to the YMCA twice a week and try to get a little bit of exercise just to keep these old bones going, you know. And there's an exercise that they have me to do sometimes where you have to just try to stand on one leg. That's sometimes really hard for this old man to do. And they'll tell me, says, focus on something out there in front of you. And I have learned that when you focus on something else, it helps you to, to be steadier on your feet. And when we're not focusing, that's when we lose our balance in life. I think about Peter in Mark, uh, Matthew, the 14th chapter, when, when, you know, this is the time when the, the, Jesus came walking out on the water to the disciples and and, and Peter asked, Lord, can, can, can I walk on the water? Yes, you walk on the water, Peter. And Peter started walking on the water. But you know what happened to Peter, don't you? Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and he started looking at the waves. He looked at the waves and not the Lord of the waves. And it is when we take our eyes off of the Lord of the waves that we start sinking in life. What we really need to do in the times that we're living in right now and these are unsteady times. We need to focus on a God who doesn't move, an unmovable God, an immovable God, a God that never changes. Listen, to, here's a passage for you to write down today. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Malachi 3 verse 6. I change not, says the Lord. And God is an unchangeable God. In this old world of change, and our lives have changed drastically, and likely in the future they may never be quite the same. But there's one thing we can focus on today that will stay the same, and that's God. He never changes. God's character never changes. Think about his character. That, that's mentioned in Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 23, where it is said of God, great is your faithfulness. Sometimes we have people surround, that are around us that are not very faithful to us. Sometimes a, a wife may have a husband who's not faithful. A, a husband may have a wife who's not faithful. You, you may have friends that you think that have betrayed you, not been faithful friends. But there's one thing about God. God stays faithful. He is great as his faithfulness. Then think about the the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. You see, we need, that's a part of this unmovable God. And, and Hebrews chapter two and nine says that he by the grace of God tasted of death for every man. That's not ever going to change. 
And then think about the spiritual blessings that we have in Jesus that will never change. Listen to Ephesians chapter 1. Write that passage down. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. For those who have believed on Jesus and repented of their sins and confessed their faith, been baptized into Christ, according to Galatians 3, 26 and 27, have access to all those spiritual blessings. And, and they belong to the Christian. They belong to the child of God. They never move. God's providence never changes. It never changes. In Romans 8, 28, Paul wrote, For I know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Are you focusing today on an immovable God? If not, why not? You see, God's providence never changes. If you break that little word providence down, it, it has the word provide in it. It's talking about how God provides for his people, for his children. And then think about the promise of heaven. That's not ever going to change. The world may change around us, but the promise of heaven will never change. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And incidentally, that's in John chapter 14, starting at verse one and reading down to verse three. But a part of those passages says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. They think about prayer. And answered prayer is something we can depend on. That immovable God continues to hear the prayers of his people. We can have confidence in that. Listen to 1 John 5, 14. I'd encourage you to write that passage down. There's so much in the Bible about prayer. This is just one of them. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So there's answered prayer. Then there's the unchangeable, immovable, unmovable grace of Almighty God. It's amazing. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then think about focusing on the word of God. Are you really focusing on the word today? Write, write down 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. You see, all of these things that I'm mentioning are things we need to focus on. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Then one other thing that we need to focus on, and that's found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 27, the everlasting arms of God. Oh, we need to focus on God. And when we focus on him, you can weather any storm that comes in your life. I want to thank you for watching today for, a spirit, for just a few minutes. May God bless you, and may God bless you every day of your life, and may God bless us through this pandemic that it will soon end and life will get back to normal. This is Billy Lammer thanking you for watching today. Have a great day. This has been Spiritual Uplift with Billy Lambert from the Summerdale Church of Christ. We hope you've been blessed by the program today. We encourage you to share it with others to let them know about Spiritual Uplift. Also, if you'd like to hear more lessons from Billy Lambert, please check out the Getting to Know Your Bible podcast. We also want to invite you to go and check out our webpage for the church family at www.summerdalechurch.org. If you'd be interested in signing up for a free Bible correspondence course, more information is available at gettingtoknowyourbible.com. Thanks again for tuning in to Spiritual Uplift, and we hope you'll join us again next time. May God bless you.